Hello everyone, uh, this is Defense Politics Asia, uh, another of all those uh, nothing to do with the strategic map uh, kind of video. Uh, this video is, I want to talk about uh, the weather, the climate of Ukraine um, and uh, what are we going to expect uh, in the coming months. So um, I took a look uh, at the temperature and the kind of like uh, rain, rainfall in Ukraine because at this moment uh, we can see that the Russian forces is avoiding uh, going through the farmlands because of the mud and whenever they actually get into the mud you know some of the vehicles actually get stuck so they're sticking to the roads and as a result you know fighting on the roads is uh, extremely important capturing uh, hubs and towns that are you know, major transport hubs uh, become very important and um, and then we can see that uh, so I use Kyiv Ray which is somewhere more in the middle of Ukraine you can actually uh, see the other uh, Kiev or Mykolaiv uh, it's actually not very different it's more or less uh, maybe just two degrees difference so we can see that uh, in March the temperature is you no know, close to zero degrees uh, which is what we are witnessing now we can see the snow and sometimes there's no snow, the snow melts away and we can see that the same uh, goes to the the southern southern city of, of Oblast of uh, Mikhlev and also in Kiev it's about the same but slightly colder so uh, by around 1 degrees so uh, we can see from this okay you see Kharkiv uh, Kharkiv is around 0 degrees so Kharkiv is a, a lot more in the north so uh, a bit colder and uh, we can see that uh, by by April, the temperature will actually spike up uh, all the way to almost 10 degrees Celsius in Kharkiv, uh, which means that it's actually almost 10 degrees. Uh, Mikolev is still colder, but, but it's basically that one degrees is not going to make a lot of difference. We can see that the weather is going to warm up uh, very quickly. And by, by May, it's already a comfortable 16 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, if if you are a Fahrenheit guy, um, uh, too bad. I'm not a Fahrenheit guy. I'm a Celsius guy. So uh, too bad. Uh, you have to make your own uh, translation. Uh, if you are Fahrenheit guy, that means you are from USA. Uh, my only suggestion is uh, ask your government to convert to international standards. <laughs> so okay. So let's go to the rainfall. In March, that is there is the least rainfall actually if you see across uh in at least this Kharkiv across the entire year March actually represents the least rainfall and uh if if we go to uh uh this is uh Kyiv Ray same we go to Mikolaiv Mikolaiv is uh, the weather is a bit different uh they actually have a lot lesser rainfall and then they have this uh, mass massive spike in rainfall uh, which represent the kind of like a monsoon like kind of uh, uh, weather pattern and then we we have uh, Kiev which uh, have a lot more rainfall in comparison uh, but also you know in March it actually have the least rainfall and so this also means that as the rainfall continues to increase with the temperature we are the, the the farmlands, the ground, uh, all around the non-road places will continue to be rather muddy if they are to fight uh, on there. Uh, of course, the ground might dry up faster, but it's no guarantee. And then uh, the, the, there will be some kind of like maintenance issue if you have all your mechanical things all dried up with mud. And then... Uh, Depend on which part of Ukraine you are, maybe some is more pal palatable, um, some are not. For example, if let's say you're in Mekolev, uh, you have a proper window you know, in April to actually you know, take, to actually drive into the farmland because in April the temperature is already up to around 8 to 9 degrees on average. And that would mean that, uh, and, then, and they have okay, also a six and a half hours of sunshine. Uh, April will be an important uh, period of time for the Russians to actually, you know, uh, take. So if you don't know where is Mikolev, okay, in case, this is Mikolev. This all this oblast is Mikolev. Kavi Ray, when I, I was talking about, is actually in the middle here. So so this 
this portion of the land, uh, April will be a very good time to actually conquer through the farmlands. And then probably that's the only window uh, we are looking at. Um, maybe we should also take a look at Dinipro. I think this will become a very vital uh, fighting fighting uh, region uh, in April. So let's go to Dniproski. Dnipro Petrovsk. Dnipro Dnipro Petrovsk. So anyway, so Dnipro Petrov, uh, Dnipro, uh, basically sim similarly they have a uh, close to zero degrees uh, average temperature, and then that means that sometimes they will snow, and then the snow will, will actually melt, and then and then you know, causing a lot of mud. Uh, then in April they have a very comfortable ten degrees Celsius. So, and then but if you look at the rainfall, uh, don't be duped by this, uh, high, high graph. It's actually only 36 mm. Uh, if you actually look at, for example, uh, Kyrie Ray, okay, they are also all not very high. Mikolev, yeah, Mikolev, actually, yeah, I got duped myself. So Mikolev actually have a much uh, higher, uh, sorry, I was clicking too much. Okay, it's at 40, 40 mm. And then when you go to Dini Pro, it's actually only at 33. So, but in April, the, the rainfall is not going to increase by much. And then this also represents that Dnipro in April will be a perfect time for the Russians to actually roll all across the all across all these farmlands. Um, and then uh, so we might if the, if the Russians cannot conclude the war uh, in March by the end of this March, then uh, we will see a much a much more wider conflict. Uh, the war will get a lot more like World War II style, where the tanks just roll over the, the grasslands um, in April. So this is what I think might happen. And then April is actually the only window because uh, once you once you go to uh, May, the rainfall will start to increase, as you can see, uh, by, a, by an additional almost 10 mm. Uh, this is consistent across and in my left is going to be much worse uh in in may the the monsoon seems to be here so the the massive doubling of rainfall so it will be like raining all almost half the time i guess and um in may it's not that bad in kiev uh but kiev is mostly a urban warfare situation and then the road networks there is a lot more tighter so the, the farmlands are not so important. So if you go down to the, you see the northern side, you can see that the road networks are more tighter. It's not so messed up because uh, this is the capital. That's why the road networks are much better. Where as you go to the south, it's just long roads of boringness and you know, and dread. Yeah, so similar in the east, uh, there's just long roads of dread and boring and, and you know, asking yourself what's the meaning of life kind of thing uh yep so so it's, it's less gonna be it's gonna be less likely to be affecting the 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 kiev and of course the western side which i'm not sure the russians want to want to actually invade into but in terms of the eastern ukraine uh where there are more of the russian speaking people um i think you no know, april will represent a a major window for Russia to actually roll over, roll across the entire country. So this is just a just a side track, you know, talking about weather because well, in the last few videos as well in the comments we were talking about weather about the mud, and I thought that this is a important issue to actually look at, and um, I think this will actually change the way the war is being fought. But at this moment, I can see uh, Ukraine is very is really you know at its limits uh, no it doesn't doesn't matter what they say in the media the reality is most of the military targets are all destroyed um, there, there is not much of an air force left there's not much of an air defense left uh, russia have run out of uh, military targets to hit they're starting to hit oil depots which means soon ukraine might going to start to have a supply problem resupplying problem uh, they may not be able to you know get their petrol and ammunition to the front line effectively and not to mention that they can be they can be struck and hit by uh, Russian Air Force 
anywhere uh anywhere in the eastern of uh ukraine so and then of course in the south it's going to be very vulnerable as well so i uh, things are not looking good for ukraine and then the weather is just going to help russia even more because the more muddier it is the the more wet it is uh actually it's more uh helpful for the defenders uh it's more difficult for the offenders the attackers but i but i think russia know what they what they are doing they purposely pick uh the late uh late feb to uh, to march you know to kind of uh make this offense and then they can climax in april to take the whole of uh, ukraine so this might be the plan i might be wrong maybe you know ukraine might surrender before that or maybe you know russia will collapse before that because russia economy is getting a very big hit but uh important thing to re be re to remember is that this is just day 13 you know it's day 13 you know even the americans took you know one and a half month to to beat iraq uh in 2003 um and the the actual major combat actually took almost a month around 26 day of major combat so we are only halfway there the war is not over uh, and then um so don't get your hopes too high that russia will collapse because this is this russia have been preparing for this uh for the past eight years they have been sanctioned sanctioned uh for the past eight years their economy has already been hit eight years ago and they have spent the last eight years um diversifying away from the western uh economies and uh you you know all this sanction is not going to uh, be very um uh, it's, it's not going to damage as much as you think it would um in fact uh this sanctioning will actually you know cause more problem uh for the europeans if the russia decided to cut the gas and uh so diver i'm, I'm actually uh diverging too far away uh so anyway uh let's end this quick update uh regarding the temperature and climate uh that's to come i don't think the war will fight until june i think the war will end by the latest is may hey eh, the latest is april sorry i think the the war will end by end of april uh but the, by the look of it i think the war might end by the end of this month so anyway uh thanks for watching this uh probably boring video uh because there's no maps you know nothing exciting to talk about uh but uh if you like you can still like the video uh, do subscribe um that will give me a lot of motivations because uh together we are now fighting for 1000 subscribers so that we can get this uh channel monetize and then you know make this uh at least a part-time drop for me so so that you know i get i can you know get compensated and the truth is uh when a video uh, uh, when a youtube channel is monetized uh uh they actually get shared more by youtube itself get recommended more to more people so that's why the 1000 actually means uh, a lot to to any youtubers and then i hope you can support me and you can also find find uh, Defense Politics Asia on uh, most of the major uh, social media networks uh, like Twitter and Facebook. So anyway, uh, if you can't understand what I say, I'm so sorry uh, because uh, maybe the, the accent is a bit different. Um, and uh, I will try and I also take the feedback about the mouse. I'll try to you know keep my fingers to myself and I'll see you in the next update.